Welcome everyone to Satsang. Today we are going to, of course, have another experience because the practical application of truth is how we come to prove it for ourselves, how we come to know it and live it, how it is that our mind becomes clear. This is part of the purification process. So not only do we expose and forgive in order to purify the mind, but prayer also does this in the most profound way. The evidence of what is true is right here where we are. It's never been anywhere else. We've been so tangled up in the idea of being something that we're not that we just don't see clearly, essentially. So let us join together today. And dive in, leave the person behind. What you are without a sense of personhood is already whole, perfect and complete already whole, perfect and complete. There's nothing that can be added and there's nothing that can be taken away. You already are. And this crazy search for something is the illusion, is the illusion in action, is a demonstration of the dream. To think that something is missing is the sleeping, deceived mind. And we're awakening the mind to realise what is, is whole, already here and now. It's present, right where I am. And there's nothing better. There's nothing more. It already is the best thing there could ever be. As I often like to say, you are the treasure. You are the treasure you've been seeking. Stop searching. Stop looking outside and look within. So I'd like to share with you uh, or remind you of a beautiful prayer that we often refer to, the part of the, the Saram Rite, the Celtic Christian mysticism. You might like to close your eyes and I'll share these words with you, allow them to really sink in, shut everything else off. This is your opportunity to realise the truth. The only thing that will bring you a sense of complete fulfilment in life is knowing the self. Nothing else. No thing, no stuff, no material possession, no person, no situation. Nothing that you think you want at the superficial human perspective level is capable of delivering on the promise that your heart is seeking. Perfection, wholeness and completeness. But it is available right where you are. So join with me in hearing and embracing, in fact, embodying these words. God, be in my head and in my understanding. God, be in my eye and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Today we're going to dive into a lesson from A Course in Miracles workbook. This is lesson 67. So I'd like to read this to you and I'm going to be very slow and very deliberate. And I invite you to allow these words to penetrate. In fact, because life is all about consciousness, consciousness imagine that they they are ignited within you. They are ignited never to leave, to anchor you. Feel these words come alive.
this lesson uses words that are repeated uh, many, many times in A Course in Miracles. Love created me like itself. Be here now. Make the significant effort required to concentrate. And if the mind wanders, bring it back. No harm, no foul. No judgment, no resistance. Just bring it back. We've been far too tolerant of mind wandering. And that's the problem. Today's idea, love created me like itself, is a complete and accurate statement of what you are. This is why you are the light of the world. This is why God appointed you as the world's saviour. This is why the Son of God looks to you for his salvation. He is saved by what you are. We will make every effort today to reach this truth about you and to realise fully, if only for a moment, that it is the truth. In the longer practice period, we will think about your reality and its wholly unchanged and unchangeable nature. This is your task for today. We will begin by repeating this truth about you and then spend a few minutes adding some relevant thoughts. So let's do this together. Love created me like itself. And here are some ideas and then I'm going to give you a minute to allow more to rise into awareness. Holiness created me holy. Kindness created me kind. Helpfulness created me helpful. Perfection created me perfect. Any attribute which is in accord with God as he defines himself is appropriate for use here. We're trying today to undo your definition of God and replace it with his own. We're also trying to emphasize that you're part of his definition of yourself. So I'll give you a minute now to practice. Now, after you've gone over several such related thoughts, let all thoughts drop away for a brief preparatory interval and then reach past all your images and preconceptions about yourself to the truth in you. If love created you like itself, this self must be in you. And somewhere in your mind, it is there for you to find. And it can be no other way 
because consciousness is the only currency of life. It's in your consciousness right where you are. And you will find it necessary to repeat the idea for today from time to time to replace distracting thoughts. It's this simple. You are not a servant to your mind. You can use the truth to replace distracting thoughts, habituated, impersonal nothingness can be replaced with truth. You may also find that this is not sufficient and that you need to continue adding other thoughts related to the truth about yourself. You may need to be fierce. And this is the case for the vast majority. Yet perhaps you will succeed in going past that and through the interval of thoughtlessness to the awareness of a blazing light in which you recognise yourself as love created you. Be confident that you will do much today to bring that awareness nearer. Whether you feel you have succeeded or not, this is a light brick with which you are building your house of light. Persistence, consistency and devotion are more important than anything. It will be particularly helpful today to practice the idea throughout the day as often as you can. You need to hear the truth about yourself as frequently as possible because your mind has been so preoccupied with false self images. Four or five times an hour and perhaps even more. It would be most beneficial to remind yourself that love created you like itself. Hear the truth about yourself in this. Try to realise in the shorter practice periods that this is not your tiny solitary voice that tells you this. This is the voice for God, reminding you of your father and of yourself. This is the voice of truth, replacing everything that the ego tells you about yourself with the simple truth about the son of God, about you. You were created by love like itself. I'll give you another minute or so just to reflect on this beautiful teaching, this truth, and then we'll open this up for conversation. I'd just like to share some of the comments that are happening in the hub chat. I am spirit. I am free. I am just as God created me. And it's really important to stay at the right level. Absolutely. Thank you, Vaughn. That's perfect for sharing. There's another question that leads on from this. So, Nick, I'm going to answer this one because I think it's really relevant for, for many people. How is it that we can tell the difference? between the thoughts I think with God, my real thoughts, the truth, and ego. And with practice, it becomes more obvious. But at first, we can start to, to see clearly that which is false. Anything other than you are whole, you are perfect and you, can, you are complete, is likely ego. 
we'll get into this a little bit more. I don't want to leave this at a superficial level because this really speaks to the crux of uh, awakening of self with a capital S realisation because it is in the absence of any notion of personhood. Ego's thoughts are always worry, fear, anxiety-based. They reinforce separation and differences. They glorify the personal, individual self rather than all glory goes to the creator of life. They speak to insecurity and a lack of safety, a lack of resources, limitation in some way, whereas God will soothe real thoughts, those that are allowed and spoken by the Holy Spirit, the wisdom within your very own being will always be reassuring, will always bring peace, has nothing to do with perspective. Ego is always about opposites and right and wrong, good, bad, preferable, disliked, desired, unwanted. So anything that has any reference to a person or personal is ego. And everything that is of truth is of the one. The isness and present moment reality of God is. The omnis, as you hear me say so often, omnipotence, omnipresence and omniscience. And so the work that we are engaged in is that of purifying the mind to allow the reality of that one voice to be heard. And there's been so many uh, demonstrations of, of masters who have walked before us who were able to live, abide in the one voice. Humans are stuck in a prison of believing their perspective, individual perspective, as real. And this is the death wish. This is the dream state. So I'm really uh, open to taking more questions about this conversation, about, uh, but to, to go further with this question. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. That's made some, uh, some, some more clarity for you. Does anyone else want to talk about this or have any questions? Another ego-oriented thought would be about someone else. Separating others and other people's problems. Seeing another as separate. Great, Nick. Okay, well, we'll open this up then to the Zoom room. Who'd like to ask a question? Sonia, go ahead. Hello, Sam. Um, I've got a question about um, the very subtle um, asking a question without striving. <laughs> asking a question like allowing the truth to 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 flood my experience instead of asking for the truth like I, there's a subtle there's a subtle resting in being without striving and also asking for truth to be revealed that I love to expand a little bit more on if that makes sense. Before you go, Sonia, when you say asking for the truth to be revealed, what do you mean in what context? Um, like when I go into meditation, I will, I will ask for the truth to reveal itself, uh, show me. 
show me what I am, show me who I am, show me what is truth. But also, um, I've listened to a meditation today of Goldsmith and he said to don't ask and rest in being. Also, which is, so I know that we need to ask, but also I feel like sometimes asking too much will be almost striving because I'm, yeah. yeah. Yes, completely. So challenge the concept that we need to ask. It's just a concept. I suspect that's where the, the issue is because that's a declaration of there's something that you don't know. So we're not doing this from the I need to know something perspective. We're doing this from the I am found. I'm just allowing the truth to be revealed and, and it is. But what? let's get clear about what's revealed. It's not like a movie script line that plays. What is being revealed is your very own essence in the absence of resistance. So if it feels like there is resistance and striving, I'm looking for something, I'm looking for something, I'm looking for something, rather than that resting back that we talk about is critical, then there's a story playing there and there's a fear that needs to be exposed. As always, I want to remind you that we we do this work from the perspective of I'm not striving or seeking. And if you notice that energy, anyone, anytime, pause. Pause and notice the story that's playing. Is something missing? Is there something missing? Because that's ego. Ego is always telling a story of something's missing, something's lacking, I don't have something now. And that's impossible. So whilst there is a period of time, as it appears to human eyes, that that is a settling in, just as, as Lao Tzu and so many other teachers have told us, we have to wait for the mud to settle. We simply apply the principles, do the work, and the mud settles. All of the angst and the uh, Thriving energy and the, um, I was trying to think of this word, restlessness the other day and couldn't think of it. Restlessness. There's a restlessness that is the habit of ego. The inability to be still is, is really what we're cultivating because it is in the stillness that we hear. If we can't be still and silent, there is not, you've got no hope. This is the, this is the massive effort that we're undertaking here. The, and we're all here, hands up, saying this is far from easy. Far from easy. So we have to we have to put up our spiritual big girl and boy panties here. <laughs> Laughing emojis. And realize this is this is what I want. I want the highest love. What's required is that I do the work, and it's going to feel possibly uncomfortable because I've habituated doing. I've habituated wanting to help myself. I've habituated hustle, striving, manipulating, controlling how things are rather than just sitting still, sitting still for so long that you slip through the invisible doorway into heaven. <clears throat> so think about that for a minute. Think about how still and silent you're required to be. I'll come to this question in a minute, Chris. Think about how still and silent you need to be. Stillness speaks. It's in the silence and the stillness that we can hear. But the intention and attitude 
with which you go into practice is everything. So if you're going in with there's something missing that I need, you won't go further. Sonia, is there any more with that? No? And so I will answer um, Chris's question because it goes with this in some ways. Where does the idea of it's not that we ask too much, that we, that we ask too little fits in here. What we don't ask for is correct is the, co the correction of perception, miracles, Chris. We're not asking for anything but for our mind to be purified, which naturally allows the voice of God, which is omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient. The song of heaven is being sung. We can't hear it because we're so absorbed with our own personal perspective. So it's not that we ask too much. We ask too little means we don't ask whether what we're seeing is correct. We never question the reality of the problem. So this journey is about let me show up and ask for the correction in, in every realm of life, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, so that I can hear the voice of complete, unopposed, all-encompassing, wholeness, completeness, love, safety, security, eternality, infinity. My innocence and that of everyone speaking and being sung. And we don't ask because we just accept our own perspective. We accept what we see when we look out. We accept the thoughts that we have in our own mind about ourselves primarily. That's why today we're focused on let's go deeper because the truth about you is right there and we suffer from a nasty case of misperception. We screw ourselves over, essentially, by thinking that we know. As we say so often, the, the win of the game of life is to declare, I know nothing. But that's okay, because the omniscient, infinite, invisible does know how to do life, your life, in absolute fulfilment, in absolute liberation, in absolute joy, in absolute safety, in absolute abundance. Can you claim that? How'd you go? The law of life is the law of fulfilment. And we don't experience that because we defend our own ideas and they're all false. Our own personal ideas are all false. There's only one thing going on and that is God. And today's conversation is a reminder to rest back in that truth, to practice with persistence, with grit, resting back in that truth. And when you notice that you've, you've come up like a meerkat, raising its head up and looking around at the world for some kind of validation of, of something, you will stay distracted because all that the world is validation of is the erroneous assumption of separation. It is the realm of the dying There's not, there's not many ways that we can talk up that scenario and you're not here to try and stick as many cherries on top of that crack cake as you can. You're here to realise you are not a mind-body complex. The person has nothing to do with your infinite loveliness, the infinity of grace which is here to animate your life. The only requirement is that we're willing to question our own perspective. As we often say, particularly in the hub, has everyone left the person at the door? Has everyone left the person at the door? You don't need the person. 
Look around in our world today. Persons are being glorified. It's so downstream of where love is. Humans don't make happy, peace, or even love as much as we crave it and seek it and search it out in countless ways. It's never to be found outside consciousness. Therefore, it has no requirements. There is nothing happening outside of consciousness. So we do this work to find the light within and allow it to be fanned as we do in, this, in these immersive communities to expand and light dissolves darkness. It's as simple as that. Light replaces darkness. Nothing else exists in the awakened truth. There is no person. You don't need one. In fact, to be attached to some kind of person, sense of personhood, which is the perceptual package, is the denial of love. So good, you see the distinction you've said, Chris. Does anyone else have any questions about that? It's not that we ask too much. It does not mean like... Um, many of the law of attraction teachers say you you can have everything. It's misconstrued. We're not here to have stuff as some kind of measure of our worth. Stuff is secondary to knowing what you are and actually irrelevant. Irrelevant. So when spiritual teachings refer to asking, we're asking for the correct, the correction of perspective. Because the truth already is. There's nothing required for it to be recognized or realized. This is a really important point. It's not, it's not that you know you've You've arrived. Some of you in the hub will laugh at this. <clears throat> you know that you've arrived when you've had a seven-figure day in business or a six-figure day in business or even a five-figure day in business. Why? Let's, let's really explore this and, and expand on this because this is, this is the flimsy nature of Perspective, it has no ground upon which it rests. It's all in the ether. That where, where else are ideas? In the ether, they're temporal. That's the answer, they're temporal. A six-figure day today, a seven-figure day today might allow me to ease off on the resistance of the present moment enough for happiness to escape, but then it'll be shut off again because the, the condition of money coming in that day doesn't happen again tomorrow. And once that hit of happiness wears off, where am I left? Needing another hit. Think about this in terms of, of people that you love perhaps. There's so many conditions. And the biggest one that we dare not speak of is you better not die. You had better not because then I'm in a real pickle. That's conditional. The whole world is temporal and it's got nothing to do with you. You are infinite, eternal love. Infinite eternal love, right here and right now. To find this is the proverbial get out of jail free card. Awakening isn't just a jump to the left and a step to the right in thinking and belief manufacturing. 
it's an entire paradigm shift about what you are. An entire paradigm shift. That was, yes. Is anyone here old enough to remember the Rocky Horror Picture Show? That was stolen from the song. It's just a jump to the left. And then a step to the right. It's not what we're doing. We're not here to try and manipulate conditions, people, experiences, so that we have a hit of, of happiness. But when any of those conditions waver, falter, such as someone we love dying, what happens? Where is your centre? If your centre is located in the temporal, crumbling is the answer. That's why we, we often use the cliche, go to peace or you will go to pieces. You go to peace or you go to pieces. The choice is yours. That's, that's the whole point of this dream. It's a dream. Nothing's really happening. It's all built on the premise that you're deciding to believe the assumption, the assumption. It's not real. It's not true. The assumption that you are a mind-body complex. You get as many lifetimes as you need. That's the recycling of reincarnation. Didn't get it this time? No problem, because nothing's happening in a dream. Does anything happen in a dream? Really? A lot of angst. I think we have to be really clear here. There's angst. There's good bits. We really try and maximise the good and minimise the bad. Maximise our strengths and minimise our weaknesses. We do everything we can to go, la, la, la. This death thing is really happening, is it? As um, one of our Divine Playground members said yesterday, it's a 180 degree. It's so clear to her now that it's 180 degree opposite to everything that we have been conditioned and trained to pick up and, and run with that we need to open to to celebrate what we celebrate in the world is the denial of love. Because it's already built on a premise that there's good and bad. That's not whole. That's not complete. You will never be happy without knowing yourself as whole and complete. That's the whole point of life. And there's nothing that can do it. Nothing in the world, no person. I know I'm not the only person that's figured that one out. God love my husband. But he did not complete me. It was never his job. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. Amen. It's no one's job. It's no things, it's not possible in anything. You all know this to be true. Wherever you are in your life, everything that you have worked your tushy off to create and make in any realm, pick any realm of life and, and work it out. Are you fulfilled? That means no doubt. Fulfilled means no doubt. Are you fulfilled with anything that you've undertaken? No, but that's okay. We're here to recognise the light within, to realise the light within, to be more interested in the light within, where our fulfilment emerges and emanates from, where our very life originates. To be more interested in, in that light expanding day in, day out, than anything that we see in the world because it is an impersonal nothingness, a mirage, a mere holographic reflection of our own state of mind. We don't need to fight paper tigers. We simply turn to the source of the light. Turn within and don't look back or you'll turn to stone as it says in the Bible. 
which really is a metaphor for just keep walking towards the light. You can't go wrong. So I want to circle back to this idea that we're doing this work realising that I already am. I already am. I'm not requiring any any evidence. I'm just here recognising I know what I need to do in life, the principles as we talk about. I know what I've, I've got to do. The purpose of life is to awaken. That's all I need to do for my entire life. And I'm going to <clears throat> have this kind of back and forth, side to side sometimes experience, but it's okay because the world is just a dream from which I am meant to awaken. It's all set up for me to awaken. That's all I need to do. We just do it directly with all of the, the tools drawn from, from proven practices to realise I already am. The self, the one self from which I am indivisible and that is perfect love. That means no fear lives here. Perfect happiness, perfect peace, perfect fulfilment. And I want to give you the spoiler alert. Heads up, you have life. It already is the case. You don't need to struggle, hustle and strive. That's the beginning point. Consciousness. Everything else is downstream and unimportant. That's what you are. That's where you are. Seeing everything from you, you can't be anything you are aware of. You are awareness itself. That's what the light is. How's everyone going today? Any other questions? Then let us end this session. And it's your task to remember the truth. You've been far too tolerant of mind wandering. This, this is the human predicament. Let's be really clear here that we rip ourselves off. Fulfillment is. We rip ourselves off by wanting to maintain our perspective. Love created me like itself already. It's already done. Your worthiness was already established in creation. In your creation, you have life, you are worthy. It's not a debate, it's the end of the conversation. The debate, the debate that happens is you wanting to be right. Is ego in defense, attack, and fight? Leave the person at the door. You are already the light of the world and that is veiled by the idea of being something that you're not that's all such a pleasure to have been with you today chris says today is the only conversation we ever need to have thank you chris Thank you, everyone. Cheer, cheer, my beloved.